fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hayo Silver, the Lone Ranger. days of the western United States, bands of outlaws roamed the frontier, and in some districts they became so well organized that the local sheriffs were powerless against them. It was not until the masked rider of the plains started his great fight for justice that honest men and women could hope for the future. It was he, more than any other man, who made possible the winning of the West. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for the desert! It's going to be trouble! I'll Silver! Away! <laughs> Riding easily, almost a part of the great white horse, whose silver hoofs spurned the sand, the Lone Ranger headed along the trail in the direction of the Badlands. Calm eyes, cool, confident, and daring, watched the vast stretch of western prairie on either side. Tonto and Scout followed close behind him. Suddenly, the masked man raised his hand, and the commander stopped. Tonto, look there. Huh? There, wheeling in the sky... Those birds. See them now? Ah, uh, want to see. Them buzzard. Yes, Kimasabi, buzzards. More of them coming every minute. They're beyond that ridge. That's right. They're still hanging in the sky, Tonto. None of them are dropping down behind the ridge. You know what that means. Ah, uh, buzzard, him wait for somebody die. That's it. There's something or someone beyond that ridge that needs help. Race your horse, Tonto. We've got to get there before the buzzards do. Get him up, Scout. Come on, Silver. I'll Silver. Away! <laughs> How does it feel staggering along at the end of a rope, Bailey? Oh, I didn't doubt. Give me water. Water. I'm going to keep you trotting behind my pony till you keel over, Bailey. Look up into the sky. Get the rope's around my arm. I said look up. Look up! Oh, I... Jerk the rope. Look up around Jack and again. It's a... buzzards. Buzzards. Yeah, that's right, Bailey. Buzzards. Keep a looking at them. They're waiting for you to die, Bailey. They're coming down. They're coming closer. Sure. They're coming to get a good look at you, Bailey. You know how buzzards are. They can see for miles. And they got a kind of feeling. A funny way of knowing when there's somebody going to cash in their chips. Pardon, you poison toad. You... You can't do this. It ain't right. Oh. Get up, Bailey. No, I can't. I... <coughs> Get up, I said. Don't pull on the rope. I... I'm dog tied, Barnum. Play it possum, that's what. You figure I'll cut you loose here. Well, you maybe still got strength enough to get a... get to a settlement, no. huh? No, Barnum. My wife... Will... When I get through, your wife will be glad to pull up stakes and head back east. 
that you won't have no husband to worry about. <laughs> Get up on your feet. Oh, Martin, I, I can't. All right, I'll have the pony drag you then. Uh, get up with this rope of tightening some... What the... Rope's cut in half. Who done that? Stay away from your holsters. Who in places do you think you're talking to? Oh, oh, oh. Steady, Silver. Yes, sir, I, I don't know who you are, but thanks. Thanks, you... You sure saved me. Tonto, untie that man and give him some water. Uh-huh. Me do it. Oh, wait a minute. That'll be enough out of you. Keep those hands high. Masked, ain't you? What of it? Well, mask or no mask, you're making a mistake fooling around with Cactus Varden. Here's the canteen, Tonto. Uh. You come, drink. Uh, so you're Cactus Varden, eh? The same. No hombre in this district is fool enough to stand against me. Perhaps. But I just arrived in this district, Varden. And I don't like the way you run things if this is a sample. I'm suggesting you take your engine part and spread your trails, mister. This don't concern you. You've had enough to drink? No more. Give me some more water. No, that's enough. No, white friends say you stop. Now, look at here. Quiet, Varden. Bailey. No, I'm thirsty. I... I'll take that. You've had enough. Too much water can be bad. Yeah. I guess I went plumb loco for a second. This coyote has been There's giving no me... There's no need to tell me what he's been doing. He's been dragging you on the end of the rope. He, he was going to leave me for the buzzer. Really, you're piling up trouble. That's enough, Varden. You're going to face trial for this. Yeah, that's a laugh. There ain't no judge in these parts. No judge or no jury. I'm all there is. And we'll take you where there is, Justice. And we'll see that you get it for doing this. Look. Look, he must have it. Looks like a posse. Martin, perhaps you won't Mister, need it. you better run for it. That ain't no posse. What? Yeah, Bailey's right. That's my gang. Hey, come and run it. Not bad. Them come past. What we do? We're not leaving Bailey here, Tonto. Take Warden's gun. Just try it. I'll meet. Get him. Good. On your horse. Uh, Bailey, quick. Up. up in front of me. Mister, there ain't no horse can carry double. You better save yourself. Silver can carry double. Up you go. Uh, if they had my gun, You do nothing, Warden. We hurry them come close. Up, Silver. You're carrying a double load, boy. Come on, Get him down. Get him on. Davis, party. Shoot him. Shoot him down. Can't you hear me? Hand your guns on him. They're getting away. Get him, boys. Give me that gun. Fading fast. Look at that stallion carrying double. That ain't no use. Stop shooting. You want we should spur after him, Varden? No, you can't get him. They're too fast. I said stop. Save your bullets. They're putting distance between us so fast. You'd as well shoot at the moon. What are you doing out here, anyways? We know you was giving Bailey the buzzard treatment, Cactus. That's so he... pretty nuts, you lad, Mav. That I told you to stay back to town. Looks like a good thing we come after you. Never mind that. I'm asking why you disobeyed orders. Well, we got news. Yeah. What we news? ain't going to have such an easy time running this district, Varden. Not from here on. Yeah? Yeah. We heard as how the Lone Ranger's coming here, this territory. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah. Figured you want to know Prano. You dug gone fool I already know. Huh? What do you mean? What do you think I mean, you blind idiot? That fellow on the white horse, he wore a mask. And he called that horse Silver. Varden, you ain't saying he's the... Yeah. The Lone Ranger. He's already here. Well, bury me in a gopher hole. That was the Lone Ranger. Varden, you, you think maybe we ought to pull up stakes and get out? No. But the Lone Ranger, he's likely to start something. Let him. He won the first round, but that ain't the whole fight. Let him start something. I'll finish it. And I'll win, too, you understand? I'll beat the Lone Ranger. <laughs> How far is it to your place, Bailey? Uh, your home. How far? Oh, a couple of miles yet. Listen, mister. Well? I can tell you mean to stack yourself up again, Varden. Suppose I do. You ain't got a tumbleweed's chance in a gale. You seen that mob that come riding up? Yes. Well, that's only half Varden's men. He's got the toughest, shootingest crowd of two-legged wolves you ever seen. Tonto and I won't leave you, Bailey. But I tell We've you, you can't... a lot about Varden. We came to investigate. And now we're not leaving until Varden's licked. Remember that. Now rest up, Bailey. We'll be at your cabin soon. He's gone. I won't ever see him again. There's the dinner on the table that ain't been touched. There's a chair knocked into the corner just like when Barden come in and dragged Sam away. It's a pretty chair, too. I recollect how Sam made it with his own hands first thing we come out here. Had to go way up in the hills for the wood, but he done it. 
I can still hear now the way Sam said to me. He said, a promise is a promise, Harry. I promised you a chair and you're going to have a good one. A promise is a promise, Harry. I promised you a chair and you're going to have a good one. Sam! Sam, it can't be. I've come back to you, Sam. Sam, you're alive. You're... Now look what you've done. You knocked the pot of soup into the fire. Oh, drat the soup. Sam, it's really you. There, 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 don't cry. I can't figure out how you got away. There's the fellow what done it, Sherry. I'm glad to know you, Mrs. Bailey. You saved my husband from Cactus Varden. You're masked. For reasons of my own. Oh, I didn't mean nothing. It just startled me. You saved my husband. You're our friend. No, your husband's back. You mustn't cry. I reckon I can spare a few more tears. These here ain't sad tears. It's just been so long since we had a friend. Now, Sherry. <laughs> yes, Sam. Yes. Sherry, just so you know, this here's a Lone Ranger, and the engine's his pard, Tonto. The Lone Ranger? Oh, mister, we prayed you might come here. This is one nest of coyotes that needs cleaning up. But... Well? Oh, just the two of you again, Cactus Varden and his bunch. You can't do it. We can try. <laughs> but you now can't. That's enough tears, Mr. Bailey. Tonto, the horses rubbed down? Uh, I'm all right, Kimasabi. Good. Now, Bailey, Mrs. Bailey, I want you both to listen. We've got a hard job ahead of us. Yeah, mm -hmm. not true. But no matter what, it's one we've got to face. I'm going to leave Tonto here with you. You're going out? Mrs. Bailey, someone has to learn what Barden is planning. Whatever happens here, let Tonto take charge. Do as he directs. Like you say, Masked Man. I'll be back as soon as I can learn Barden's plan. Oh, uh, we'd be ready. Yes, Silver. Adios, mister. Adios. Goodbye, Masked Man. I'll be back. Come on, Silver. I sure hope he gets back. I sure do. All right, you want Brace quiet down. It was pretty. Uh, you know, Varden, he was... Well, never mind. I'll deal with him directly later on. Now, listen here. I've been figuring about Bailey and his old lady. Bailey's got the ranger in that engine with him. But we'll be ready for him. Drag them chairs up closer. It's four again twelve. But what do you... There ain't no buts. Four again twelve. I've been figuring... That cabin of Bailey's is set down right in the middle of some nice, tall prairie grass. It's dry grass. It'll burn like wildfire. We're going out tonight and put the toys to it. Yeah. We're going to use fire on them. You recollect how there's a breeze that always springs up just about the time the last star blinks out? Yeah, kind of early morning breeze. Just when the night's darkest, just before dawn. <laughs> and that's when folks is most likely to get tired and drop off to sleep. We'll set a ring around that cabin. When the fire drives them out, we'll fill them full of lead. They'll be easy to see again, them flames. Suppose they don't come out. Don't come out? Well, in that case, I reckon we, we don't need no bullets. On the counter, they'll be uh, burnt to a crisp. Yeah. Either way, they... Hello, Varden. Oh, hello, oh, Pretty. Oh, it's you, Pretty. Where you been? Varden, I just seen something. Yeah. Keep talking loud while I tell you what it was. It's important. Uh, well, speak up, Pretty. Why wasn't you here? What is it? I seen a figure up on the roof near the chimney. I tell you, there's someone heard what you were saying. Who was it? I don't know, but I reckon it must be the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, huh? Is he still up there? Yeah, he's still up there. What are you going to do? Uh, I reckon we can get the Lone Ranger now. Uh, well, boys, uh, what do you say we have a little deal of poker? We still got time? Good idea. Get your gun, pretty. They'll sneak outside and draw a bead on the Lone Ranger. We got him this time for sure. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Not a 
continue our story. In an effort to learn Varden's plans, the Lone Ranger went to the outlaw's meeting place. But Purdy, Varden's right-hand man, saw a figure crouched on the roof tree near the chimney. He warned Varden and... You see him yet, Purdy? It's dark, Varden. Wait till I get a squint up at the roof. Careful we don't follow the creek. Runs right behind the cabin. That's on the other side. Wait. Yeah, I see him. Leaning against the chimney. Make sure we don't miss. Get ready. It's kind of hard to make him out in the dark. Draw a good bead. I got my gun set. All right. Pull trigger. God damn it, he's gone. He's rolling down the other side of the roof. Yeah, come on around the cabin. Look out the ravine. Here he goes. Hip, you hear that splash? Yeah, I don't hear no struggles. It's over, pretty. Reckon he's done for. All right, you fellas, come on out. Did you get him, Barton? We hear the shot. Sure, we got him. Pretty and me plugged him clean as a whistle. We hear him roll off the roof. Where's the body? Washing down on the creek. Close up your mouths. He's done for. Now, there ain't nobody to stop us from setting fire to Bailey's land. Yeah, we'll smoke them out. Get your horses. We're ambling out to start a fire. You seen any sign of him? White friend, him not back yet. He's been gone a long time. Uh. You reckon something happened to him? Mm, me not know. Whatever happened to him, he'd done his best. You listen. Uh, more. you talk as if... What well, other is way it, is there to take it, Sam? He should have been back long before this. Wyatt, you listen. Huh? What you talking about, Injun? Listen. I don't hear nothing. Me neither. Soon you hear. Horse, come fast. Sam. Sam, I hear too. Yeah. It's a horse. Injun, you got good ears. Injun, wait. Where you go? Get out of the door, Injun. Suppose it's one of Arden's men. You're a clear target against the light. Ah, uh, that white friend's horse. Tonto no silver sound. You mean you can tell it's silver? Ah, uh, that's right. Silver, you come back. Land of Goshen. It's the horse, all right, but where's the Lone Ranger? Saddle's empty. What happened to the Lone Ranger? Bailey, their note. Huh? Sam, he has looked at a note fastened to the saddle flap. By gravy, you're right, Sarah. Uh, and what him say? Well, there ain't no light. Can you figure any horse being smart enough to get here without no rider? White friend send silver many times. More, you're standing in the light. Uh, there, that's better. I can get the light from the cabin on it. Now, let me see. I ain't none too good on reading what somebody else puts into writing. Huh? Oh, Sam Bailey, you know you can't read worth a hill of beans. Give me the note. Uh, you read. It's addressed to you, Injun. Huh? It says it. Oh. What's wrong? It bad? According to this here note, Cactus Varden plans to set a fire someplace. And he starts to tell us what to do, but the note ain't finished. What you mean? I mean just that. The note stops. Like as if the Lone Ranger went back to get another earful and something stopped him from finishing. No, not say what we do? No, Injun, I don't. Sam, did you hear that? Sam. Huh? Sam, what are you staring at the horse for? Didn't you hear what I said? Yes, Harry, I heard it. I heard every word. Cactus Varden's aiming to set a fire and the Lone Ranger ain't told us what to do. Yes, Harry. And I got a feeling what stopped him from finishing that note was something pretty serious. What? What do you mean? I mean them stirrups, Injun. Take a look at them. Oh, them not tied. That's just what I seen. Them stirrups was dangling loose. How are we going to stop Varden from using fire to get us, Sam? Yeah, that's one problem, Sari. And the other problem is, what happened to the Lone Ranger? Sam, you mean something about them stirrups? Ah. Uh. Yep, Sari. Any time a fella sends a horse traveling without a rider, he almost always ties the stirrups up across a saddle so they don't flap around and scare the horse. Well, Maybe the Lone Ranger didn't do it that way. No. White friend, him always ties her up. Oh. Then what we've been fearing is right. The Lone Ranger ran into trouble. Yeah, Mo. The way that note stops right in the middle, and the way this silver horse come galloping in with his stirrups flying every which way, yeah, the Lone Ranger ran into plenty of trouble. Too fast for this darkness, Cactus. Can't see nothing. Cut up, pretty. I know this trail blindfold. We don't want to get too close. Yeah. The horse's hoofs might tip off the Baileys to what we're planning to do. Bad mouth for once in your life, you get a smart idea. Rain up, pull up your horses. All right. 
Cut in close here, all you gun toters. Oh, I, I got this thing all figured out. Yeah, like shooting prairie chicken. Davis, you and half the boys is going with me. We'll circle around behind Bailey's cabin till we get the wind behind us. There ain't no wind, Cactus. There will be when we get there. That morning breeze. You can always count on it. Yeah, plumb for God. Pretty. Yeah? You'll take the other half of the men and cover this side. Right. Spread your men out thin so there'll be a fire all around. I got you. From here on, we'll all walk our horses. This smart when we get maybe a couple hundred yards away. Understood? Yeah. Sure. Just one thing more. Don't start no fire till I start it myself. And everybody sets fire to the grass. All right. Well, do we get moving? Yeah, let's go. I'll start the fires when you get the signal, Barney. Yeah, not before. Come on, you fellas. Head this way. Right with you, boss. Hey, Varden. Yeah. Did you notice? That there breeze we was counting on. Yeah? Can't you feel it, boss? The breeze is starting up. That fire is going to go like blazes. <laughs> Horse ain't used to being hitched to a plow engine. You sure this is going to work? Mm, maybe so. What's the idea of plowing this wide fur around the cabin anyway? Mm, that fire break. When fire come, maybe it stop. Fur big enough. We stop now. Oh, boy. Whoa. Oh. Think we ought to go once more around the cabin? No. We'd be trapped out here, huh? Uh, it's too late. Hey, wait a minute. You're unhitching the horse engine. What about the plow? Ain't you dragging it back to the cabin? Too late for that, too. Then we leave the plow here and Say, go... Say, what up. about the horses? We can't leave them to face the fire. Isn't that right? We do this. You mean send all the horses away? Let them run free? That's right. We send all horses away. The Lone Ranger's horse, too. All horses. Only us left in cabin. When Varden come, we fight. But it's any right in line with the wind and Billy's cabin. Varden. Yeah? The boys are all set. I've been around the circle. But say... Well? The wind's coming from this side. What'll happen to the fire Purdy sets? Want to go the other way? Not when it gets burning good. The fire from this side will be so hot it'll suck all year. So the fire will come back this way and up to the cabin. That's the way it always does. You going to set it now? A couple of minutes. I... But the... Horses. Bailey must have spotted us. He's turned his horses loose. Yeah, I reckon so. We don't care about the horses. Guess they're still inside. Look out, Varden. One's heading straight for us. Yeah, that was close. Varden, did you see it? That was the Lone Ranger's horse. That white stallion. Yeah, empty saddle and all. Hey, the horses stopped back there. Davis used to hear. Huh? I'm getting that horse for me. But what about the fire? You set the fire, Davis. Cut up to a couple of hundred and set the flame to the grass. I'm getting this horse. Hey, Lone Ranger did. This ought to be a cinch. Come here, boy. Hey, Silver. Here, boy. I'll just grab them reins. And... What the... Keep your hands high, Varden. Where'd you come from? Who are you? I was waiting for you, Varden. Crouched down on the grass. You're the Lone Ranger. I'll take those guns. <laughs> this rope is going around you tight. But you can't be alive. We seen you fall into the creek. We shot you. You felt like a sack of potatoes. That's exactly what you did shoot, Barton. A sack of potatoes. Huh? I was hidden behind the chimney. When you shot the sack thinking it was me, I let it roll. I knew you wouldn't go down the ravine to the creek to make sure. What are you turning me up for? Barton, I could make you run behind Silver the way you did Bailey. No, no, but you But I'm can't. not going to. Instead, you're going up across Silver's saddle horn. We're taking a little ride, Barton. Yep. Steady, Silver. What the... You light the match. You got a pine torch behind your saddle. What are you aiming to do? You were going to put a ring of fire around Bailey's cabin. Now I am putting one around your men. Huh? With Silver to make the circle, your men will be surrounded by flame before they can move. There'll be only one way for them to go, Varden. In toward the cabin. You're crazy. That cabin will go up in flames. That's where you're wrong, Varden. Have you ever heard of a fire break? A fire break? You, you mean Bailey's got a furrow plant around his cabin to stop the flames? Exactly, Varden. There, the torch is caught. Come on, Silver. Stretch those legs. Close them in with fire. Come on, Silver, old boy. The great white stallion leaped forward. The flaming torch in the Lone Ranger's hand brushed the top of the dry grass. 
circle of fire sprang up around the bewildered outlaws. I'm... Hey, there's fire behind us. Run for your life. Fire! We can't run. It's in a circle. He started a fire. Run, run. Head for the cabin. There ain't no other way. Come on. In the cabin, Tonto, Bailey, and his wife had watched the Lone Ranger set his trap afire. Then outlined against the rising flames, they saw the terrified bad men drop their guns and run toward them. Jerry, it's a lone ranger. He's alive. He's setting a ring of fire around him. He must have been watching all the while. I guess if the lone ranger started a fire, he must have looked over that faraway plowed and figured it was plenty wide enough to stop the flames. No, but others, them not know that. Yeah, Injun, you're right. They're panicked like a herd of buffalo. Look at them come. Why, we could pick them off easy again, them flames. No, you not shoot. Hey, you open door. But we can't. Open door. Don't shoot, don't shoot. You come in, cabin, one by one. I got my hands high, Injun. Don't shoot. All right, you buzzards. Line right up again the wall and don't move. Bailey, you got to do something. That fire. The fire won't reach the cabin. If you hadn't been so scared, you couldn't see straight. You'd have seen a fire break. Huh? You, you mean... We mean the fire ain't getting to the cabin and you... Sam, look. Huh? What? It's the Lone Ranger. He run his horse right through the flames. Well, I'll be a horned toad. Look it. He's got Varden across the saddle. He ain't dead. No, he ain't dead. Bailey. <laughs> Bailey, are you all right? Oh, masked man, you saved us and you saved the cabin. I'm sorry I had to burn off some of your grass, Bailey, but it was necessary. Oh, forget it. It'll grow better for it. Oh, here's the whole parcel of them, mister. What are you aiming to do with them? What I started to do in the first place. Take them to a court. You got us, mister. Your leader will end up in jail with the rest of you. Keep your gun trained on them, Tonto, while Bailey ties them up. Ah, uh, me too. Then we can herd them to town and... Tonto, what is it, Kimosabe? Uh, Tonto, glad you all right. Oh, oh I see. You were... You were worried because you thought something had happened to me. Uh, Tonto feel good. Much better. We always good friends, Kimasabi. Always, Tonto. We'll keep on riding together in the cause of justice. Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>